Welcome to Ace My Exams Learning. We are excited to have you here. Our channel is dedicated to providing you with the best study tools and resources to help you ace your exams. Let us get started with today's learning. Question 1. Define the term communication. Communication is a two-way process in which information often conveyed as a message is initiated by one individual known as the sender. This message is transmitted through a designated channel or medium to reach another individual, referred to as the receiver. The receiver, upon receiving the message, reacts by providing feedback, which is acknowledged as their response or reaction to the information received. Question 1.2. Choose an item from column B that matches a description in column A. The form of nonverbal communication that relies on the eyes of the sender. The correct answer is H. Kinesics. Words used to establish rapport. The correct answer is C. Phatic communication. The way people use space and distance to communicate ideas. The correct answer is J. Proxemics. The transmission of messages between individuals. The correct answer is D. Interpersonal communication. A staff member reads her newspaper during lunch hour. The correct answer is G. Indirect written communication. A bar chart is used to indicate the number of employees who resign every month. The correct answer is B. Visual semiology. A card system is introduced to monitor employees' punctuality. The correct answer is E. Graphic representation. A siren hoots to indicate that lunchtime has ended. The correct answer is A. Acoustic semiology. The principal sends a memorandum to all staff members about the new act. The correct answer is F. Direct written communication. The person is also known as the destination of the message. The correct answer is I. Receiver. A distance of zero to half a meter is maintained. The correct answer is D. Intimate zone. Words or expressions used by certain professions. The correct answer is F. Jargon. Distance of more than 3M is maintained. The correct answer is A. Public zone. Poor health causes the communication process to be ineffective. The correct answer is I. Physiological barrier. Body movements and facial expressions. The correct answer is E. Kinesics. Interview held in order to change someone's point of view. The correct answer is C. Persuasive interview. Does not use words to send a message. The correct answer is G. Nonverbal communication. Any factor that prevents the message from being effective. The correct answer is B. Barrier. Communication between human beings and non-human entities. The correct answer is J. Extrapersonal communication. Personal documents needed for an interview. The correct answer is K. Curriculum vitae, identity document, and qualifications. Question. List five dimensions of self-image. The five dimensions of self-image are 1. The physical dimension 2. The skills dimension 3. The intellectual dimension 4. The psychological dimension and 5. The sexual dimension Question. Name four categories of communication. The four categories of communication are 1. Intrapersonal communication 2. Interpersonal communication 3. Extrapersonal communication 4. Mass communication Question. Which dimension of a person's self-image could motivate a student to perform outstandingly in any game of sport? The answer is The skills dimension A student's skills dimension of self-image plays a pivotal role in motivating him or how to aim for outstanding performance in sports. Question. 
indicate the communication barrier, which is responsible for ineffective communication in each of the following instances. The presentation went well, although the room was very hot. The answer is physiological barrier. Question. It was difficult to understand what the lecturer was saying as she was using a strong local accent. The answer is semantic barrier. Question. The staff member failed to defend herself in a disciplinary hearing. As a situation of fear and hostility was prevailing between her and her supervisor. The answer is psychological barrier. Question. I can't believe that the supervisor chose a woman instead of me. I have been performing this task for so many years. Hence my father likes this saying, a woman's place is in the kitchen. The answer is perceptual barrier based on gender. Question. Nervousness prevented him from presenting himself at his best at the initial interview. The answer is psychological barrier. Question. Give five characteristics of a good self-image. People with good self-image exhibit the following characteristics. 1. Those with a positive self-image set practical goals and exhibit reduced fear of failure, leading to increased confidence in their abilities. 2. They are well-adjusted, reasonably content with themselves, and demonstrate acceptance of others. 3. They excel in social interactions, engaging positively with most people due to enhanced social skills and an optimistic outlook. 4. Their sense of humor enables them to be tolerant and maintain a balanced approach to life, regardless of whether they experience success or failure. Question. Define the term gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is the act of intentionally setting up communication barriers due to concerns about the potential outcomes of a particular action or situation. Below are two examples that exhibit the limit or control of information flow. For instance, in media, an editor may decide not to publish a sensitive news story to avoid controversy or harm to the publication's reputation. Similarly, in everyday life, an individual might avoid discussing a contentious topic with a friend to prevent an argument that may hurt their feelings. Study the scenario below and answer the questions. Jaden works for a small financial company. He has a good self-image and he usually works well under pressure. His manager, Mr. Craig, asked him to complete the budget and he gave him a strict deadline. Jaden worked hard to complete the task, but on the day that his budget had to be completed, a virus destroyed all the information on his computer, including his budget. He was frantic and stressed. Jaden thought to himself, all managers are the same. I know that he will never believe me. Instead of explaining the situation to Mr. Craig, he avoided him the whole day. Question. State three elements of self-image. The three elements of self-image are 1. What you think of yourself and how you perceive yourself. This element involves your personal beliefs, thoughts, and feelings about your own character, abilities, and appearance. 2. Your interpretation of what other people think of you. This reflects your perception of how others view you. It is shaped by the feedback and opinions you receive from others. 3. Your ideal self-image, who you hope to be. This element is about your aspirations and the image you aim to become. It represents your desired or ideal self. Question. Give Jarden two sentences of advice on how to improve his self-image. Jaden can improve his self-image by adopting a more positive outlook in two ways. Firstly, he should interpret other people's behaviors positively and avoid taking things too personally by realizing that interactions are not always a reflection of his worth. Secondly, he must embrace failure and disappointment, not as setbacks, but as opportunities for learning and personal growth that can contribute to his overall development and resilience. Question. Explain the social needs of workers in the workplace. 
The social needs of workers in the workplace revolve around their inherent desires for interaction and socialization. Workers naturally want to belong and discuss issues with others. This can be fulfilled through activities such as team meetings and team building exercises, where individuals can bond with their colleagues, share ideas, and collaborate on projects. Question. Define the following concepts. 1. Prejudice. 2. Stereotyping. Prejudice is the formation of an unfair and unreasonable opinion about a person, often without sufficient prior thought or knowledge of that person. Example of prejudice. A person assuming that someone from a different country is unintelligent without getting to know them. Or believing that a co-worker is lazy based on their appearance without considering their actual work performance. Stereotyping refers to labeling a person based solely on their affiliation with a particular group or forming a fixed, general impression about the characteristics of a specific group of people. Example of stereotyping. Assuming that all teenagers are rebellious and disrespectful. Or believing that all members of a certain profession are wealthy. Question. Identify an example of stereotyping from the scenario above and quote it. In the scenario above, an example of stereotyping can be found in Jaden's thought. All managers are the same. This statement is a stereotype that assumes that all managers exhibit the same negative characteristics or behaviors without considering the individuality of each manager. Question. Explain the term gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is when individuals actively control or limit the flow of communication by creating communication barriers intentionally or deliberately because of fear of familiar and unfamiliar consequences of their actions. Question. Do you think Jardin is guilty of gatekeeping? Substantiate your answer. Yes, he is guilty. He avoided the manager the whole day. Question. As a manager, Mr. Craig has the responsibility to ensure that his employees' needs are met in the workplace. Illustrate Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow proposed that people are driven by a series of needs, which can be categorized into five distinct levels. In his role as a manager, Mr. Craig can fulfill his employees' needs at various levels of Maslow's hierarchy to create a motivated and satisfied workforce, as outlined below. Physiological needs. At the base of the pyramid are the most basic needs, referred to as physiological needs. They include food, water, shelter, and sleep. These are essential for survival and form the foundation of the hierarchy. Safety needs. The second level encompasses safety and security needs. This includes physical safety, health, and financial stability. Employees should feel safe in their workplace, free from physical harm, and should have job security. Social belonging. The third level represents social needs. They include a sense of belonging and interpersonal relationships. In the workplace, this relates to positive working relationships, teamwork, and a sense of community. Esteem needs. Above the social needs are esteem needs, which include self-esteem and the esteem of others. This pertains to recognition, respect, and achievement. Managers can support these needs by acknowledging employees' contributions and providing opportunities for growth and recognition. Self-actualization. At the top of the hierarchy is self-actualization, which involves achieving one's potential and self-fulfillment. This can be encouraged in the workplace by offering opportunities for creativity, innovation, and personal development. Question. Discuss two types of reference groups Jardin has as an individual within his community using examples. Jardin, as an individual within his community, has two types of reference groups, namely. 1. The primary reference group. The primary reference group is made up of people with whom Jardin has direct and intimate contact. In this case, his primary reference group includes his immediate family, such as his parents, siblings, spouse, and children. These individuals have a significant and enduring influence on his beliefs, values, and behaviors. 
For example, Jardin's parents may have shaped his work ethic and values, while his spouse and children impact his decisions and priorities. 2. The Secondary Reference Group This group consists of individuals with whom Jardin has indirect or less intimate contact. This category may include his in-laws, extended family members, neighbors, or acquaintances from social clubs or community organizations. While they may not have the same level of influence as his primary reference group, they still play a role in shaping his perceptions and behaviors. For instance, Jardin's interactions with his in-laws during family gatherings may influence his social norms and behaviors. Question. Explain the following terms and give an example of each. 1. Persuasive interview. A persuasive interview is conducted with the aim of convincing or persuading someone to change their opinion or behavior. An example of a persuasive interview is a disciplinary interview within an organization. In this scenario, a manager conducts an interview with an employee to persuade the employee to acknowledge their misconduct and change their behavior to align with the company's expectations. 2. Informative interview. An informative interview is conducted to provide, gather, or exchange information between the interviewer and interviewee. An example of an informative interview is a job interview, conducted to gather information about the candidate's qualifications, experience, and suitability for a particular job role. Question. What would you expect of the most suitable candidate with regard to each of the following? 1. Punctuality. The most suitable candidate should demonstrate punctuality for the interview. Arriving early may result in unnecessary nervousness and discomfort, while being late for the interview should also be strictly avoided, as it can negatively impact the candidate's chances of being considered for the position. It's advisable to arrive five minutes before the interview and a candidate should ensure they are well informed about the interview time and the precise location of the company. 2. Eye contact. The most suitable candidate should maintain consistent and appropriate eye contact during the interview by looking directly at the interviewer. Maintaining eye contact is important for the following reasons. 1. It makes it easier for the interviewer to hear what you are saying. Since your voice will be projected in the direction in which he or she is looking. 2. Maintaining eye contact with the interviewer ensures that their attention is focused on your responses. 3. Through eye contact, you can gauge the interviewer's reactions and receive continuous feedback. This enables you to adjust your communication accordingly. 3. Posture. The most suitable candidate should be mindful that their posture conveys a significant part of their attitude during the interview. It's therefore crucial to 1. Be attentive and have your posture reflect your attentiveness and engagement in the conversation. 2. Sit up straight with your hands resting on your lap, demonstrating an alert and professional demeanor. Avoid slouching, appearing overly relaxed, or leaning on the interviewer's desk. 3. When standing, maintain an upright posture with square shoulders and your hands hanging naturally at your sides. This will portray confidence and professionalism. 4. Refrain from leaning against any objects, as it can give an impression of casualness or disinterest. Question. Give an applicant five hints on his or her conduct before the interview. Here are the five hints for an applicant before an interview. 1. Gather information about the organization, including its products, services, size, and history. Understanding the company's background demonstrates your genuine interest and preparedness. 2. Pay careful attention to your appearance, dress professionally, and maintain good posture. 3. Prepare thoroughly for the interview by knowing the interview location, time, and the interviewer if possible. Being well prepared shows your commitment to the opportunity. 4. Familiarize yourself with the job you've applied for, understanding its duties, responsibilities, and location. 5. Be ready to answer common interview questions about your background, qualifications, salary expectations, reasons for leaving your current job, and your interest in the position. Question. Choose from the following list to identify the type of question in each of the sentences below. 
One, if you saw someone in your department consistently taking home company stationery, what would you do? This is a hypothetical question. Two, this position entails a certain amount of travel. Do you have a valid passport? This is a closed question. Three, what is your opinion on punctuality? This is an open-ended question. Question. John is applying for a position as senior clerk and he is invited for an interview. Illustrate the interview that John is going to attend as a communication process according to Jacobson. Let's illustrate this job interview based on the Jacobson model and using the elements of the communication process as shown below. The interviewer, in this case, is the sender of the communication. He or she encodes their thoughts and questions into a code, which is typically a language understood by both parties. The message is represented by questions posed by the interviewer. This job interview uses face-to-face -face interaction as the medium of communication. The interviewer directly asks questions verbally, thus making voice the primary mode of communication. Nonverbal cues such as body language and facial expressions, may also play a role in conveying the message. The interviewee acts as the receiver in this communication process. They decode the questions presented by the interviewer and interpret the interviewer's intent. The interviewee decodes or interprets the questions asked by the interviewer to understand what information is being sought. The interviewee then provides feedback by answering the questions with responses. These answers constitute their feedback to the interviewer's questions. Potential noise factors during the interview may include interruptions such as background noise, ringing phones, interviewee nervousness, or biases on the part of the interviewer. Additionally, technical issues or language barriers may also introduce noise into the interview process. Let's recap the whole illustration of the interview as a communication process. The interviewer, in this case, asks questions and becomes the sender or originator of the communication. He or she accomplishes this by encoding their thoughts and questions into a code, which is typically a language understood by the interviewee. The encoded thoughts and the questions become the message. Face-to-face -face interaction is then used as the medium to deliver the message. The interviewer directly asks questions verbally, thus making voice the primary mode of communication. Nonverbal cues, such as body language and facial expressions, may also play a role in conveying the message. The interviewee receives the message and decodes or interprets the questions presented by the interviewer to understand what information is being sought. The interviewee then provides feedback by answering the questions with responses. These answers constitute the feedback to the interviewer's questions. Potential noise factors during the interview may include interruptions such as background noise, ringing phones, interviewee nervousness, or biases on the part of the interviewer. Additionally, technical issues or language barriers may also introduce noise into the interview process. Question. State four types of questions that John should expect to be asked in that interview. Give an example of a full question of each type. Joe should expect a variety of questions in his interview. Here are four types of questions he might encounter, along with examples. 1. Closed question. Example, have you worked in a similar role before? 2. Open-ended question. Example, what motivated you to apply for this senior clerk position in our company? 3. Specific question. Example, which software programs are you proficient in using for data management and record keeping? 4. Reflective question. Example, you mentioned your strong organizational skills. Can you provide an example of how your organizational abilities have positively impacted your previous workplace? Question. State five functions performed by the mass media in your community. The mass media in our community serves several essential functions. 1. Mass media informs the community about what is happening and highlights newsworthy events. 2. It interprets news stories, shaping public opinion and influencing the way people think about particular issues. 
3. Mass media educates the general public on matters of significance and interest, contributing to their knowledge and awareness. 4. It provides a platform for local businesses to advertise their goods and services, making the public aware of the available options. 5. The mass media entertains the community through various means, including informative content, activities, films, competitions, and more, enhancing overall community engagement. 6. Mass media offers valuable services by providing information about TV programs, upcoming events, cinema and theatre schedules, weather reports, and opportunities for buying or selling goods through classified advertisements. 7. It promotes culture within the community by presenting, reviewing, and announcing cultural programs and events of interest. 8. The mass media also acts as a moral watchdog for society, exposing instances of corruption and other irregularities in the community, thereby contributing to accountability and transparency. Question. Define the following terms. 1. Manipulative reporting. Manipulative reporting is a journalistic practice in which a newspaper, website, radio station, or TV channel presents information in a manner that intentionally shapes the audience's perception of the content either negatively or positively. For example, a newspaper may publish an article that selectively presents statistics and quotes that support their preferred perspective while downplaying or omitting opposing viewpoints or evidence. 2. Mass communication. Mass communication refers to the process of communication between a sender and large numbers of people who typically do not have personal connections with each other. This form of communication often involves the transmission of a message through mass media channels, such as television, radio, newspapers, or the internet, to reach large numbers of people who do not know each other. A good example of mass communication is a national television broadcast of a major news event or a widely distributed newspaper article. Question. Give four requirements of good advertising. The four requirements of good advertising are 1. The advertisement should comply with the AIDA formula. AIDA stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. Therefore, effective advertising should grab the audience's attention, generate interest in the product or service, create a desire for it, and prompt action, such as making a purchase. 2. It should clearly and accurately represent the product or service being advertised by highlighting the product's unique selling points and benefits. 3. Advertisements should be tailored to the specific demographics, interests, and preferences of the target audience to maximize their effectiveness. 4. The way an advertisement is presented, including its visual and audio elements, should be engaging and consistent with the brand's image. 5. The objective the aim of the advertisement should be clear and measurable, whether it's to increase brand awareness, boost sales, or promote a new product. Question. Complete the following table and distinguish between mass communication and interpersonal communication under the given topics. 1. Number of people. In interpersonal communication, communication occurs in isolation, on a one-to-one, or a few-to-few basis. While in mass communication, the sender conveys a message to a large number of people or groups of people. 2. Nature of medium or channel. Interpersonal communication can be either direct, such as face-to-face conversations, or indirect, such as phone calls or written messages. On the other hand, Mass communication often requires complex technology, and the creation and distribution of messages may involve expert knowledge. 3. Nature of feedback. In interpersonal communication, feedback is usually immediate, as in the case of face-to-face conversation. However, feedback in mass communication is often impossible or delayed as the sender may not receive immediate responses from the vast target audience. 4. The relationship between sender and receiver. In interpersonal communication, the sender and receiver may know each other as the communication is personal, often involving a level of familiarity and two-way interaction. However, in mass communication, 
The sender and receiver generally do not know each other, making the communication typically impersonal and one-directional. Question. Name five techniques that can be used in manipulative reporting. Manipulative reporting uses the following range of techniques to influence the way information is perceived by the audience. 1. Manipulative reporting can employ emotive or subjective language deliberately. This includes using words and phrases that evoke strong emotions or biases in the audience. For instance, instead of reporting, the protest occurred, a manipulative report might state, the violent protest erupted. 2. Reporters may use vague language, such as it is believed, unconfirmed reports, or unidentified sources. These phrases create uncertainty and allow the report to present unverified or biased information as if it were fact. 3. Manipulative reports often provide only a partial view of the information. By selectively presenting specific details while omitting others, the report can distort the overall narrative. For example, highlighting one aspect of a study while ignoring contradictory findings. 4. Another technique is to take statements, quotes, or data out of their original context by removing the surrounding information to change the intended meaning. A good example is when part of a politician's speech is omitted to distort their position on an issue. 5. Manipulative reporting may employ confusing or incorrect statistics to mislead the audience. This can involve using misleading charts, graphs, or numbers to support a particular narrative. For instance, using a graph with a misleading scale to exaggerate a minor change. 6. Manipulative reporting can use photographs that convey a specific message. For example, showing an image of a few protesters at a rally to make it seem less significant than it was. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe and be the first to know when we upload new videos.